On this week's episode of the Ritual Misery Podcast, Kent drones on and on. Wait, no, no, I drone on and on and on. Uh, we also had Christmas, and we're about to wrap up 2018. Um, yeah. And do bumblebees swim? Uh, I bet we're going to find out. But also, and more importantly, we have a guest this week, Richard Gunther. Woohoo! Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 198 for Thursday, the 27th of December, 2018. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos, that's Kent way the hell over there. In between us is Richard, and this is our annual celebration of all things that happened this year. So of course we had to have Richard on, because only Richard can rant for us when we can't. <laughs> I don't know. Y'all do a pretty good job on your own. <laughs> yeah, Ken. <laughs> uh, um, glad to have you back again, Richard. How have you been? I have been doing pretty well. I am trying to stay healthy this holiday. I have CES coming up. And, of course, you always get sick at CES. So I'm trying to keep all of my uh, healthy blood cells, whatever the right term is, trying to keep all of that stuff going in good shape this time of year. And it's hard because you're around kids and kids are just big old germ magnets. Yes. Uh, germ factories are really, I mean, they don't, they don't just attract them. They pr reproduce and uh, <laughs> modify and, and then, mutate. yeah, and mutate and then spread. So they're like, they're like a one-stop shop of all things yuck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I figured, I figured maybe you would just go ahead and get sick the week prior to CES so that you could farm your own and maybe spread that out instead of collecting other people's. Maybe, yeah, you could maybe, be patient zero this year. Yeah, you, you need a positive, uh, uh, a positive pressure system. So instead of sucking in all the other germs to you, you're pushing out your germs to everyone else. I often do end up leaving for CES <laughs> with some crud already started. So <laughs> let's hope that doesn't happen this year. And I'm trying to avoid it because actually uh, my partner Edward is sick right now mm. so i'm doing everything i can to try and not get that yeah i for, for the first half of december i had some crud going on and i finally kicked it oh, and i think i kicked it to the other side of the bed because now rick is just completely like coughing and choking i'm like look yep. I, you know You're just trading yeah, you know, and somehow the kid be, that usually sleeps between us didn't get it. Like it jumped over the kid to my wife. Like I don't know, I don't know how that works out. <laughs> Skip the six year old, go straight to the wife. I I'm not sure. Oh man. Um, it's, well, uh, other than being sick, uh, I hope you guys had a, a wonderful holiday. Mine has been great so far. Uh, got some cool things for Christmas: some work shirts, some books. Um, speaking of books, I got something interesting, Amos that um, I think you would like that. Uh, so we've had a certain group of guests on our show a couple of times. Uh, people that we met actually when we were hanging out with Richard at South by Southwest a yep. few years back. Uh, the Lienzo crew uh, who created the game Malacca, someone decided to make a book about the process of the creation of Lienzo a little bit about the Tarahumara uh, people and the creation of the game Mulaka. Really? Yeah, it's called Making Mulaka. And oh. it's really good so far. Now, that is something that. Um, oh, oh, I mean, first of all, did we have we gotten a mention yet? Like, are we mentioned in the book anywhere? Because, like, we were instrumental to the success yeah. of that entire process. <laughs> I mean, of course. Yes, oh, sorry. Uh, I don't think I've gotten to that chapter yet. I, I'm just at the point where they, they're launching the Kickstarter. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. So so you're still a couple of chapters ahead of where we enter the story. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm like fair enough. We're to our chapters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, um, we... we we will be signing uh, uh, Making Mulaka books at uh, South by Southwest this year and tribute to the, uh, to the, the, the amazing uh, efforts we put into the product overall. Um, that's that's going to be a thing. So just let us know. Yeah, it, I'll, I'll make sure that, I've, that we put a, uh, a link to the 
uh, to, to the site where you can buy this book yeah. in yeah. our show notes. So because uh, yeah, we we will uh, we will definitely be signing it, especially on page uh, <clears throat> insert number here later, uh, where we actually appear in the story. And um, you know when, when when we make that appearance, that's uh, that's the that's the best page for us to sign, unless you want us to do the, like the uh, the outer spine, like or the 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 leaves on the side. You know, I'm, I'm into that too. So <laughs> do I? <laughs> So that would just be weird. I mean, I'm I I my, my anniversary is February 29th. I mean, I'm into weird. So, <laughs> right. <laughs> Richard, uh, did you get anything cool that you want to tell us about? Yeah, I actually received as a gift something that I'm going to have to register with the federal government. Uh, is it a human? <laughs> uh, dude, you don't register those. You traffic them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not funny. <laughs> if, you guess? If, if you'd been through Korea t- a couple times and been through all the CBTs that I've been through, there's nothing about that that you can't find some sort of humor in. Like, right. I mean, no, I'm dying to know. What, what, what is it that you received that needs to be registered, Richard? I received a drone for Christmas. Uh, what kind of drone? It is an Autel Evo. And it is uh, a, a relatively autonomous. It has all kinds of smarts to, like, not bump into stuff, to mm. avoid trees. You can basically set it a, des- a destination, and it will get there with its own avoidance mechanisms and everything. It's pretty cool. Very cool. Um, are you going to get your FAA certification, or are you just going to stay under 400 feet? No, I'm going to stay within the allotted, mm. allowed amount. I'm... I mean, the the primary reason that I want this is to kind of better explore my property, which I uh, haven't really been able to fully do because of some of the terrain where we can't actually get down near the water and everything. Now, and uh, how, you know, it how, will also be lots of fun. How far from uh, from Reagan Airport are you? Oh, we're nowhere near okay. Reagan Airport. We are in a uh, let's say a flight path mm-hmm. of the Baltimore airport, gotcha. but not within the, uh, like the mileage perimeter that you have to worry about. So, uh, I have similar news to that. Um, I, uh, so I've been looking at getting a drone for about a year now and the price was never right. They, they not knock a hundred dollars off the price. Still didn't right quite meet where I want it to be. Well, you'd, you'd knock $100 off the retail price at Best Buy, and then you add in some Amazon price matching because Amazon's prices have dropped down since there's $100 marked off. And nice. then and then you use some gift cards and some, some credits and some this and some that, and you end up... Uh, uh, having a radio silence pause. You end up picking up one of these on the way home. <laughs> So. And that that is translating so well. Don't for those of you listening, I'm, I'm, doesn't I'm, that just sound great? I'm I'm trying I'm trying. Yeah, it's it, it, it's a DJI Mavic Air. Um, I literally picked it up on the way home tonight because the price finally hit the right the right price that I was willing to to spend on it. Cool, very with, cool. With some some gift certificates and such. Um, so I will uh, I will be joining you in the drone crew. Uh, probably awesome. probably this weekend. But I do plan on getting my my certification through the FAA because I would love to see what I can do at over 400 feet with some of the natural scenery around here. Mm -hmm. So that's, Uh, so quick, quick plug for you, Amos. Uh, I believe you had a good discussion with Odocta about that very product a few weeks back on IQMZ tech. Yeah. 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 Uh, Well, we, we, we talked about the uh, Mavic pro two, Mavic 2 Pro and Mavic 2 Zoom, which are the pre- the the, uh, the predecessors, the ancestors of this. I don't know what, what's the antonym of predecessor. Um, but yeah, it, it, this would be the, the, the those the are the newer successor? ones. Successor. There you go. See, this is why we have you on the show because I word, <laughs> I word good. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, me and Kent word good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. This us is, too. <laughs> yeah, see, see how much of that we can just 
fuck up in one sentence. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, me, me and uh, uh, me, me and uh, now you got me saying it like that. Oh, Doctor and I had a nice discussion about that about four episodes ago on the old IQMZ Tech. Um, fun times, and he actually picked one up, and I'm still waiting for his review because last time I talked to him about it, he had not flown it around too much. Cool, very so, cool. Um, I did get an Apple Watch Series 4 for Christmas. I've been talking about it for a while. I uh, wanted to get one because this is kind of the one that I got myself. Um, I uh, I wanted a watch that would see through my tattoo. And I'd heard the 4 could. The 3 was locking up on me all the time. It was getting annoying. The biggest change, the 4 does see through my tattoo, which is great, but the biggest change is my daily activity has doubled because now it's not locking all the time because it thinks I'm not wearing it. So now it's actually getting an, an actual caloric count for the day, and it, it like doubled my, my, the, the calories that I'm burning. It's, it's like, oh, your, your, your uh, weekly goal is a little low. You want to bump that up by like 200 calories a day. <laughs> You're like, I knew I wasn't that big of a slot. Because <laughs> it, was, it was like 400 calories. I was like, I know I'm burning more calories than that, but I could barely meet that because it was locking all the time. And if it's locked, it doesn't, it's not checking your heart rate, not checking the usage and, or your activity level. And now it's like, the first suggestion was like, you want to bump that up to 750? Because you're way past that. Yeah, this is the model that's, that's FDA certified, right? Uh, function and all that? Yes, yes. It's got the the... The echocardiogram built in, everything else. It's pretty cool. Right on. I enjoy it. Richard doesn't like it yet because it's still not thin enough for him, but whatever. Yeah, I'll buy it when they slim it down. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be never. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, I, I, I will probably never buy one. Hmm. Uh, I'd only be able to wear it once in a while. Yeah, not in your current job. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Hey, um, you saw some movies this week, I'm guessing, by these show notes. Um, care to share anything about those or? Yeah, dude. Uh, yeah, I've got a couple of things. So uh, I saw Bumblebee. Mm-hmm. Uh, the boys and I went to it. Uh, I, I need the Amos's simple review. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, thumbs up. Okay, good. One or it's, two it's thumbs up. It, no, there's only one thumb. It's either the thumb is up or the thumb is down. I don't. Wait, I'm, I'm not, so confused. The I'm last not, time you talked about this, there were yeah, two. No, anyway, whatever. No, no. I'm, I'm simplifying so, every every time. I simplify it a little bit more. It's just thumb up or thumb down. Yeah, so th- this is the first Transformers movie in a long time that I've looked forward to. Yeah. And uh, it was good. I-, I wish there was a little bit more of the G1 uh, era Transformers stuff. Uh, but the fact that G1 was a part of this movie at all was brilliant. And it was awesome. My favorite scene was Soundwave saying Ravage Eject. And Ravage <laughs> popped out of his chest and attacked an Autobot. And it was freaking <laughs> awesome. Uh, the next movie we saw was Aquaman. We went, all of us went on Christmas Eve actually and watched it, and it was actually really good. Yeah, it's not quite Wonder Woman good, but if Wonder Woman was not in the picture, Aquaman would be hands down the best DC movie uh, to come out in the current era. It's funny you say that because I, I was looking at the numbers for Aquaman and it won the weekend, and I was thinking, you know, really the last film to do well for them was Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the re- the other movies uh, pretty much have been garbage. I <laughs> I actually heard the same review earlier today. Like, if it, was, the, if it wasn't for Wonder Woman being so awesome, this would be DC's best movie ever. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, it was so really good. That's twice in one day I've heard the same opinion about the same two movies from different people. So I'm going to go with that's That's probably, probably a pretty good sign. Unfortunately, we don't have either one of them in the draft. <laughs> we do not, which we'll get to in just a second. But speaking of movies, uh, Richard, you've had a little bit of a change in how you consume some movies. Well, yes, yeah, sort of. Um, I mean, I used to use Windows Media Center mm-hmm. as my primary DVR and home media server and stuff like that. And over the past couple of years, I've been starting to use Plex more, and as the writing has been on the wall, well, there's no writing on the wall. Um, there's really no wall left. Uh, Microsoft has abandoned Windows Media Center, despite the fact that it is probably and will always remain the best DVR ever created. But 
never had the kind of support that it needed to make it a really good full-fledged product for general consumers. I finally turned mine off this past week and that was um that was a sad moment yeah that's all but i ended up with a leftover pc that i could then repurpose so that's a good thing (laughs) and what are you doing with it now is it your smart home hub or did you no actually that ended up becoming edward's new daily pc (laughs) nice Oh my god! I, the last time I owned a, a Windows Media Center anything was probably ten years ago. I I never actually had one in full usage. I had XBMC um, on a on a machine. I was trying that out at the same time that I was trying Media Center out, and uh, I walked away from either from both of them, just not not feeling either one really. And a lot of it was probably just not utilizing the capabilities of either one. And yeah, you know, I mean, part of the failure of Media, Media Center was that it didn't have support for high definition cable until very late in the game. Mm. And once it did, it was really far, far better than most everything else out there. It also had Netflix built in and it had other movie services that you could use. So it, it had a lot going for it. And it was way, way, way ahead of its time. And, you know, I, I can understand why Microsoft wouldn't want to bother maintaining it because it only had like six million users compared to TiVo's <laughs> two million users at the time. But to Microsoft, that's nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not even worth the effort. Um, right. I always remember like TiVo, they had that first mover advantage. They were the, they were. The, they had the, the interface down and they just never did anything with it. And finally I got tired of them and it was like, you know what? I don't need a remote control working on a digital interface that I can push the button. And a second and a half later, it finally responds to the button, button the button press. I was just, and it just wasn't getting any better. So I just stopped using my TiVo. I don't know what cheap ass TiVos you were buying. Mm. Well, at the time they were, the, <laughs> at the time they were the top of the line. I, I threw it away a long time ago, but I don't, I don't know. Oh, well, um, things that last a long time. Let's see if we've lasted on top of the charts for one more week with this week's movie draft. Welcome to your movie draft minute presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of December 24, 2018. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. Ah, children. You spend the first two years teaching them to walk and talk and the next 16 telling them to sit down and shut up. Let's go to the scoreboard. <laughs> Team Movie Party's in last place with Bumblebee's 34 million and Second Act's $10 million debuts, bringing their total to $222.9 million. Team Vod Squad falls to fifth place with debuts from Welcome to Marwin and Vice, bringing their total to $262.8 million. Team Drunk Edge Gaming moves up to fourth place with $100 million from Aquaman and $6 million from Holmes and Watson, bringing their total to $329.4 million. Team Game Nights in third place with $378.2 million. Team Ritual Misery is in second place with $455.5 million. And with $49 million from Mary Poppins Returns, it's Team Have a Drink with $482 million. That's your movie draft minute. All totals are accurate as of December 26, 2018. Mortal Engines killed us, dude. Yeah, yeah it sure did. Uh, it did not hold up. $13 million. Uh, value per dollar at one point three million per dollar spent, uh, a, a paltry amount. Um, and uh, yeah, Mary Poppins. Uh, it could have been worse. Mary Poppins didn't do as well as a lot of people expected. It could have been much, much worse. Yeah. It will continue to make money throughout the yeah. holiday season, though. Yeah, and yeah, that's exactly. And I think Mortal Engine. So uh, Lucas, my son Lucas, and his girlfriend are watching Mortal Engines like here in about 20 minutes. Yeah. Those are probably the last two tickets that are ever going to be sold for that movie. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Squid in uh, chat is, trying, is saying he tried to warn us. Um, that was so, <laughs> so last year I had the, the amazing buy of a quiet or the last season I had the amazing buy of a quiet place. So that's pushing for and pushing for, and we got, and it was, it was awesome. This year, Kent went with Immortal Engines saying it was going to be the hottest <laughs> shit, and the opposite result happened. 
Um, although I feel we're still going to end up in third place <laughs> because I just don't see, we, we've got nothing left in the tank and there's still some, some decent movies coming out. Yeah. I, well, I think the, so a, a couple of the movies that are out right now uh, are going to have legs, but I, I think the only movie that's not out, that's going to make more than, than like $15 million is glass. Yeah. It's kind of the, that's kind of a wild card. I think, uh, if glass does well, uh, like like in the eighty to a hundred million dollar range, then Game Night's going to overtake us. I'm I think I think it's going to do well. I yeah, really I'm starting to see some previews and it's uh, uh yeah. I yeah, don't, I don't like previews, thing, but uh, it's it's got me intrigued. It's it's pretty freaking interesting. Yeah, well, and the other thing it's got going for it is no other movies of note are coming out anywhere near it. So right. it's going to have the field all to itself. So everybody's going to go see Glass. Um, so congratulations, have a drink and, uh, probably game night. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to beat us. Uh, but the, let's the get to the really important the- part. Let's get to the really important part. Movie party. Not feeling your chances right now. Yeah. Like they were the big winners last year. Yeah. Uh, big. They blew all out of the water. Uh, but their, their movies right now are doing well. For, for example, movie or yeah. Movie party's got Bumblebee mm-hmm. uh, it's doing really well. Well, I mean, not as well as it could, but it's it's approaching fifty million. Yeah, but unfortunately for them, they're coming from way behind in last place. Yeah, so it's yeah. not gonna happen for them. All right. Um. Hey, another sounder. Yeah. Can I please have your attention? In the last thirty minutes, Kent's done something. And now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's game. Play with him. Play with him. Play with him. All right. Uh, Kent, this week you have uh, established a game of sorts for Richard and I to compete against each other in a duel to the uh, uh, audio death, I believe, right? Is that is that what the rules say here? That's a Duel to the audio death? Yeah. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, <laughs> well, as long as you can clean it up in post, I guess that's fine. <laughs> um, so th- this... This week I'm gonna I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I'm gonna have Google flip a coin for me. So Richard, do you want to call heads or tails? Uh, sure. <laughs> he says yes. Tails. <laughs> said t- it actually it is tails. Uh, so you get to go first. All right. So this is gonna be ten questions. This this is this game is called Once Upon a Time in 2018, and it's basically just about the events of 2018. There's five questions a piece. Uh, good luck. All right, Richard. For, the first answer is always Donald Trump, right? Oh, okay. We, well, we'll, let's see. see. We'll see. Spoiler <laughs> alert. <laughs> Spoiler. All right, uh, Richard. Which country changed its constitution to remove time limits for its leaders, thereby? Making the incumbent president for life. China. That is correct. It is China. Amos. Hmm. I'm going to be mad at you if you don't get this one right, actually. <laughs> Which company became the world's first public company to achieve a, a trillion market? trillion dollars. Ca- yes. One Apple. trillion dollar. What well, was the first trillion dollar company? Apple. Uh, followed three days later by Amazon. It was real. Yeah, it was right on the right on the tail of Apple. Followed roughly three weeks later by Microsoft, and everybody's yeah. like, "Huh? Yeah, <laughs> like well, there's they're, they're still there. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not making a lot of noise, but they are like they are selling products. I, I don't know if you if you follow the Microsoft train, they did that on purpose. They're like, we can't be first. Uh, we got to slow down a little bit. And they're like, oh, we, <laughs> we can just, and then, and then like Amazon popped up right after and they're like, Oh no. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll take third. Yeah. That keeps the spotlight off us. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need any more government. Interface. Yeah. We don't, we don't need a repeat of 98. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Richard, which country became the first major industrialized country to legalize cannabis for recreational use? Canada. It was indeed Canada. Oh, hey. A. Amos. <laughs> In July. It's going to be planet, A. It, <laughs> yeah, there you go. In, in July, which planet made its closest approach to Earth since 2003? 
I feel like Richard would have gotten this one right, but maybe not so much you, Amos. Since 2003, so a 15 year cycle of, yep. of, was it, it's not epihedron or epa, whatever, it's the apa. No, the apa is the, for, anyway, um, 15 year cycle. No, no. Continue to tell us more about your ignorance. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Continue to define <laughs> my, my science ignorance. Um, I'm going to, this is 15 years, so they go further out. I'm going to go with Saturn. Sorry, Amos, it's Mars. Ah, uh, that was my next guess. Hmm. Yeah, it was I, that I, I, wouldn't have, the I wouldn't have gotten that. It was between Mars or Jupiter for me. Hmm. You would have gone with Jupiter. But that's what I Jupiter. went with. I yeah, went I, be so. I went between Mars and Jupiter. <laughs> no. No, I didn't. I'm not entirely convinced that you did. <laughs> yeah, no, just keep talking. Amos. <laughs> just wait till we get to the science story of the year. <laughs> All right, back to Richard. Which country hosted the 2018 Winter Olympic Games? Hmm. Wow. I would I'm... be surprised if you don't get the, Well, it was a long time ago. It was like 10 months ago. I I am kind of horrified that I don't know this. I should absolutely know this you because should. I watched a lot of it. Yeah. Yep. I remember you talking about it. <laughs> That's why I'm so surprised. <laughs> and I don't remember where it was. He can tell you what streaming service had it, but he can't tell you where it started. <laughs> there's, only yeah. about, there's only about, what, 192 choices? <laughs> so throw, throw a country's name out there. Yeah, something like that. No, I, I, I don't even know how to guess on this one. All right. It, it, well, well, it, it, it depends. It depends on how you want to define it because it was a joint venture between North and South Korea, but it was hosted physically in South Korea. It was not a joint venture between North and South because the what you're thinking of is the... Um, the delegation. Uh, yeah, the, and the teams like combined to... To make one right. team, right? The, the delegation is combined, but but yeah, yeah, okay. So it was in Seoul, but I can't. I yes. can't. I, it's in Seoul, South can't, Korea. I don't win that one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so right now the score is two to one in Richard's favor. Amos right. goes back to you. Okay. Women were officially allowed to drive in which country? Which was the last in the world to do so? Saudi Arabia. Of course, that was Saudi Arabia, uh, a strategic U.S. partner that happens to be uh, the most. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm supposed to leave that to Richard. <laughs> All right. So is it, speaking of Richard, we're moving back over to you, sir. All right. Which which British actress plays Mary Poppins in Mary Poppins Returns? Oh my God! Oh, you're <laughs> Amos killing is me! A piece of, uh, of you're killing me! <sighs> I can't, I can't think of her name. This would have made a really good, really good uh, game of player pass. Oh, it yeah, really I, would. I cannot think of her name at all. I can picture her. I. Yeah, I can't do it. Uh, she was in the Tom Cruise movie where they went back and repeated the same thing again and again and again. I I don't know her name. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise had a movie like that, like like Groundhog Day. It was called The Day After Yesterday. Okay, was it really called that? <laughs> no. I don't think it was called that. Is it, is it the day after, or was it? Uh... Live, die, repeat, uh, something. No, that was the promotional thing that they yeah. put on the cover to try to rename it because the original name they thought wasn't all that good. Right. But yeah, what was her name? Emily Blunt. Emily Blunt. <laughs> so, After Amos. the wah wah. <laughs> Amos, you get your own movie question. Which actor plays investigative journalist Eddie Brock in the Marvel comic superhero film Venom? Ed Hardy. One more time. Ed Hardy. Ed Hardy. Sure. Try that Ed name one more time. Edward Hardy. 
maybe slightly different. <laughs> <laughs> maybe try a different pronunciation. <laughs> You might you might say words differently in in mm. in Western Europe than uh, oh you know what I think that was pre show banter <laughs> <laughs> yeah no idea become a patron <laughs> become a patron and get the pre show um I I'm going to the judges on this one and I uh, they're they're shaking their heads no um, the correct answer is Tom Hardy so look uh, Ed Tom I I'm not up to speed on the vampires of uh, of Forks uh, Washington right now so. Okay, um, whatever that was. I think it's my turn now. It, it really is Richard's turn. We are going over to Richard now. <laughs> All right, Richard. Which actor came to prominence in the film's Deliverance in the Longest Yard and sadly passed away at the age of 82? Oh. I know this one. Burt yeah. Reynolds. Yeah. You know, it, it feels really weird to have applause <laughs> over that. Uh, but yeah. yes, you you are correct. Uh, it was Burt Reynolds, the mustachioed yeah. man himself. Yes, uh, Amos. Which influential chef was an author, television personality, and travel documentary maker, and sadly took his own life at the age of sixty-one? Um. Oh my God. I don't remember his last name. You clearly don't watch enough CNN or this would be emblazoned in your brain by now. Right. Um, the, the problem is I actually like the show. Well, the shows, the different shows when I watch them. Um, and I can't even like the names of the shows aren't even coming to mind right now. Um, I really oh, need to Anthony Bourdain. Book. Very good. Yeah, there we go. That's Anthony Bourdain. I knew, Again, I knew the Anthony really, because we shared we share a first name, but uh, the Bourdain part I couldn't you quite get the uh, the applause sound effect there. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, uh, the score the final score is tied. It is three to three. Uh, I did not come up with a tiebreaker, so yes, you are going to have to have your uh, death battle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that one that one's easy. I just got to push this button right here that's uh, Richard self-destruct. How's that, Richard? Worked. See? It, it works work. perfect. <laughs> oh, I see. What <laughs> All right. All right. Now, it would not be a year-end show <laughs> and being put in a pardon the applause as a, as a show title. <laughs> <laughs> appropriate, appropriate it's not bad it's not bad uh it would not be a year-end show with the one and only richard gunther if we did not have a year-end segment so let's look back at 2018 the only way we know how coming up with a bunch of random shit right before the show that can't put down on a piece of paper <laughs> yeah so so in keeping with the annual tradition uh, we made a few categories of things from 2018. We've got like best movie, best TV show, best gadget, uh, world event, things like that. And we're just going to kind of run through those uh, and kind of one at a time tell what we thought fit those categories the best and maybe, uh, you know, have, have a short discussion about those items and then move on to the next one. Um, so let's start with the first one, which is best movie. Richard, what did you think was the best movie that, that came out in 2018? So I am handicapped pretty significantly on topics like this because I very rarely see movies the year they come out. I usually see movies once they're on video and I can either rent them or buy them. The only movie that I think I saw in 2018 that came out in 2018 (laughs) that I would qualify as an excellent movie was Deadpool 2. Okay, and that's actually that's This is surprising. one of those films when I was just like laughing my ass off the entire time. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, let me ask you this, are you interested in the PG-13 re-release that's playing right now? I'm kind of not <laughs> I mean, I might watch it if it comes to cable, but I'm not all that excited about it. I'm sure they'll throw in some Easter eggs, but Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I liked the movie as it was. 
yeah, I don't know what they're going with on on that really. But the only thing that I really know about it is the the little uh, Fred Savage vignettes that they've been playing, and right, those right. are excellent. If if the if the new cut of the movie maintains that kind of uh, the the vibe, like if if Fred Savage is in right. it throughout, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm gonna have to see this. <laughs> Amos, what do you think? Uh, I'm down to watch it. Uh, I'm not going to go to the theater to watch it. Uh, I, I reserve that for the things I'm super ex- I have to be excited about a movie to watch it with my family, let alone take them to the theater. So, oh, yeah, good point. Because I'm not a talker, and most of my family are movie talkers, and I... Oh, yeah, so, you're the people yeah. that I can't stand to be near. Uh, we know them. <laughs> uh, so what I'm, movie did you choose for your your favorite 2018 film? I don't even know that this came out in theaters at all, but I know I saw it on Netflix about halfway through the year. It's called I Kill Giants, and it is an absolutely beautiful story. It's wonderfully told. I can't say much about it without giving the given the, the the crutch of it away, uh the crux of it away. Um I <laughs> I just really thought this movie was massively endearing from the, from the description. She, uh, she takes Odin's hammer to school with her to, to kill giants or whatever. Like it was just, it's completely outrageous. The movie did not turn out anything like I thought it would about halfway through the movie. I figured out what was really going on and it held true. It didn't try to throw any extra loops in there. It just stayed true to the story and it's a beautiful story and it was, it's just done exceptionally well. And I recommend everybody watch it. It's on Netflix. Right on. And um, uh, the movie that I chose, I just talked about it probably two months ago or something like that, a month and a half ago. Not even that. Uh, <laughs> Bohem- yeah, Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, what what a beautiful film. Uh, the music, of course, was, is absolutely amazing. I mean, everyone knows that, that Queen's music is awesome. So that's, that's, um, that's an objective statement, I think. Um, but... What I think what really brought this film um, home for me was Rami Malek, I believe was the actor's name. Uh, yep. His performance as Freddie Mercury was like from what I've seen of, of interviews and and like, uh, you know, stage performances of Freddie Mercury. Malek nails it. Mm. Like he is Freddie Mercury. And it was just it was so tightly written, well acted. um, it was, it was just screen magic. I, I love, 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 love that movie. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to purchase that when it comes out. What else was That's Rami awesome. Malek in? What do I know him from? Uh, he's, he's in Mr. Robot. He yep. played the Egyptian prince in the Night at the Museum movies. Mm. Um, what else has he been in? I, I think he, he actually won an Emmy for Mr. Robot. Yeah. So I would love it if he gets an Oscar nod for this. I don't know if it's that caliber of performance, but I think he is a way underrated actor. I think he's, he's really, really good. Mm. Um, what, uh, what TV show did you think was really, really good? What was your best TV show of 2018, Richard? So this is going to be very, very silly, but my favorite TV show right now in general is Superstore. I think that this is just an amazing screwball comedy. I think it's on NBC, if I remember correctly. And it's of the caliber of of The Office, but far less annoying and with many more, like, minuscule nuggets of funniness in it that you could miss if you blink. Mm. Gotcha. Gotcha. I, so you mentioned the office. I'm just now getting into the office, uh, the American one. Well, either one, I'm really, uh, because my 18 year old daughter, she loves the office. So she'll, I'll catch her watching it and just sit down and enjoy some of it. Like I'm not into the stories or whatever, but just the, the fact that I can sit down and the jokes are, they're just so well written and so well framed. It's, it's an it's an amazing show. I really enjoy it. I wish I could have. I wish I had the time to just sit down and watch it all the way through. And we're also revisiting that '70s show. And holy crap, I missed <laughs> that show. That show was just gold. It was sitcom at its finest. Stupid comedy, yep. completely inconsequential, but makes me laugh every single time. 
Well, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that 70s show because I got turned on to a new show this year called The Kids Are All Right, which you'll recognize as the theme song for mm-hmm. for that 70s show. But the, and I think that was on purpose. The The TV show takes place in the early 70s. Mm-hmm. And it's, have, you, has, have either of you seen this? It's an ABC show. Mm-mm. I have not. So it, it's about a family. Um, uh, <sighs> so it's a, it's a mom and dad. And then they have, I believe it's eight sons in the early 70s. They're like a, they're an Irish Catholic family. And it is hilarious. The middle child or one of the middle sons anyway is the, he's the focal point character. And just the interactions with his younger brothers, his older brothers, his neighbors, his parents. Um, and then of course, you know, the backdrop is the early seventies. So there's, you know, Vietnam and all kinds of other Mm -hmm. uh, things happening. And it is, for me, it is just spot on. And I got to give a shout out to Poodle Puncher, uh, who after the movie party, the Diamond Club movie party, uh, the most recent one, uh, we were talking about that show and I had to binge it. There's only eight episodes out right now until after the, um, uh, the holiday break and then it'll be back and I'm really looking forward to it. Great show. Cool. Um, I got to give a shout out to Jew bears in the chat room. It's a name I don't recognize. I think I might know who, uh, who that is, but I've got two different options and they're kind of tossed up in my brain. So thank you for, for joining the show. Um, it's a, it's a Jew. It's a, uh, um, Jason, Jason like, Jew. Yeah, see, he just confirmed yes, it. Okay. Yes. Okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> the uh, the best TV show, in my opinion, and this comes mostly because of my subjective experience with it, is Game of Thrones. Season 7 was absolutely amazing. Going through the rewatch with Richard and Jenny on Let's Talk About Thrones. I've got two two plugs in one show. This is amazing. <laughs> um, talk, d- going through and doing that and uh, just taking notes and rewatching the episodes and I, I'm relearning so many things that I'd either forgotten or just cruised on by or whatever and seeing it through Richard's eyes and seeing it brand new from him it's so good it is so good um, yeah I, I, I man I, and I'm so looking forward to April 28th ish when the new season will be coming out so wait 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 wait, wait. they announced it they, they they have not. They said April. Oh. Um, but if you do the math with uh, with the new season of True Crime, or uh, yeah, is it True Crime or whatever whatever the cop one is, uh, mm-hmm. they don't they don't do two primary shows on the same Sunday. So if you do the math with that one and then the one that they have scheduled to follow it, uh, it comes out to February or uh, April twenty eighth being the premiere. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, and it's you know how many how many new episodes of Game of Thrones aired in 2018? Seven, zero. I I oh. was wondering was if really? that really counted as 2018. Wow, but like, I, I'll we've I'll been watching past. a lot of Game of I, Thrones, and one might argue with as on demand as television is these days, does it matter? Right. Yeah. yeah. And I almost put it on my list until I realized. Yeah, that, see, I didn't realize it. We've been. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's just so good. It's yeah. It has surpassed um it has surpassed at least Friends in my on my list of favorite TV shows of all time, which uh Friends usually bounces around between uh it's you know first spot and second spot with mm-hmm. um with uh, uh Firefly. And yeah, it's it's past Friends. I enjoy watching Game of Thrones more than I enjoy watching Friends. Um, I'm going to need to watch some Firefly just to confirm it's standing amongst the three shows now. So, <sighs> yeah. So our next category is best gadget. I'm going to go first because the, the talking about the best TV shows kind of leads right into my favorite gadget of 2018, and that's LG's uh, series of, of OLED televisions. Uh, LG has had OLEDs out for a couple of years now, uh, but. This year is when when OLED really caught my eye. Uh, yeah. OLED, of course, being the the technology that, um, unlike LED, uh, which is like uh, computer controlled um, uh, uh, pixels, basically. That uh, so you've got a screen that's backlit. <laughs> now, now we're going with your your uh, your. This is your space. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, 
the difference. So basically, the difference is with with OLED, each pixel can turn off or on exactly to the the color that uh, that you want it to be, right? Yep. To include black, which means it's off. Where your normal LED screen, the pixel is never off. It's just like muted. Right. Uh, LED is like a big transparency in front of a light box. Yep. Right. right. So that's why but, you. That's why you're if you're looking at a black screen, your living room is still glowing because you're not actually <laughs> right. Right, but an OLED yeah. TV, you get true black, so it's infinite yeah. contrast. And I have fallen in love with these TVs, and I have purchased one. I've I've purchased their um, 65 uh, inch version of their OLED, and uh, I'm eagerly awaiting its arrival at my house. I cannot wait. <laughs> you are you are going to have eye gasms watching that thing it is it is just friggin amazing speaking of just freaking amazing i keep running across an instance where i see the ipad pro that richard has as his gadget um <laughs> i like i i did i buy mine two years too early i think i might have because the new one is just um just stupid good it is and you know the funny thing is that I went and read a whole bunch of reviews about how the re, the the tech press was disappointed. This is not what the reviews were about, but the the message from the tech press was generally that it's not yet a computer replacement. Well, when <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, quit your whining. I know everybody's just whining and bitching about why aren't tablets as good as computers? They're designed to work differently. They're designed to do different things. Just shut the fuck up and enjoy the amazing technology that we have. Yeah. And maybe, just maybe, you can see how powerful they are. The new iPad Pro may not be a desktop replacement. It may might not be a laptop replacement. But it is now... The thing that if I'm with a client in a conference room, that is what I have out with the iPad Pro keyboard yeah. that you can buy. That is what I am using instead of my laptop now. My, it's fantastic. My iPad Pro is two, is two years old or whatever. It's a 12.9, whatever. Um, the only thing it's missing to be a laptop replacement in my experience is audition i just need audition on the ipad pro and i could actually do all my editing and everything else right there i wouldn't need my my macbook pro really at all i would love love to have good professional audio editing on the ipad i, yeah. I don't think we're there yet but yes i well, agree I with mean, you i think that would be a uh, really adobe really nice adobe brought rush which is pretty good video editing software from my experience it's not fully there it's not fully baked but they are bringing the full power of uh of photoshop later later next year or whatever right um i i'm i'm hopeful like this is the first time i've been like oh we might actually get uh we might actually get something really really awesome as far as video editing or audio editing from audio eventually yeah. eventually i don't think it's going to come quickly but eventually the I'm sign sure. the, the signs are pointing toward more towards yes now than than ever before which yeah. sounds ridiculous but it like if you've been watching if you've been waiting right now is a really good time to be hopeful do either of you use a mouse with the ipad pro no you, you, you can't, can't. there really isn't a way to do that well yeah so and that's uh, I don't know to, to be a to be a laptop replacement for me. I think the the thing that was holding me back from looking at the iPad Pros when I was in the market for uh, a new laptop was the fact that it runs iOS. Mm. It's and, and because that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, I, no, seriously. I mean, this is my this is the thing that really irks me about the the tech press when they talk about this is that oh well, IRS prevents it from being a real desktop operating system, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. It, w welcome to the new paradigm. Uh, by <laughs> by definition, it's not the old one. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 
Um, and and right. really, honestly, especially with the new the new pencil with the the multifunction tapping or whatever, you really don't need a mouse because you can accomplish everything with the pencil. You could almost do it with the old pencil, like just by tapping and holding. I mean, there's there's workarounds to get past the fact that you don't have a pointer on the screen. It's really just breaking that paradigm. It's you know, it's really all all you need to do. Also, the new pencil, yeah, is just like three times, four times better than the original. It, it, I would go with much more than that because the fact that you can charge the iPad and the pencil at the same time already takes it like a magnitude of quality better. Magnitude. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit of feature from Go, but it, yeah. Well, they, they, it's uh, going to leave yeah. something out so that you can make an improvement on, on it next year. My gadget is not going to be an electronic. It was going to be my Apple Watch, but you know what? I got something else. I've been waiting to talk about this, and I keep forgetting. It's been sitting right here in front of me. Uh, about a year ago, I was invited to a a beta for a, a for a hard game for like a, a, an actual card game. Um, we played it as a family. We loved it. We sent our feedback in, and it went from Carl says to Carl spies. This is the full version, full retail version of the game. They sent it to me for free, along with the first expansion um, for my participation in the beta program. Basically, it's all the games that you played as a little kid on the road traveling with your family in card form. So instead of just looking for letters on, on a license plate, that might be one of the things that has in here. Find the letter E and you can find it on a license plate or on a sign, or you need to find a barn, or you need to find a red car or a, a, a pickup truck or a car trailer or I mean there, all the things that you can have on the road there's a card for it and you got to find what's in your hand and try to find it as quickly as possible because it's a race and it makes the road travel from here to Anchorage which is about an hour uh, interesting again for my teenage kids like they love playing this game on the way into town and if you can hook 13 and 16 year old kids on a stupid card game that a 6 year old can understand and play you got a fucking winner and yeah, that's, that's what this thing. is. It's amazing. I don't even know what it retails for. Uh, I was because again, I was lucky enough to to catch on to the the beta. Um, if you have kids and you go on the long road trips, find this game, Carl Spies. Find it. Uh, it's in a blue package with a green octopus on it. Pick it up. You will not be let down. It's amazing. It's such a good game. And that's nice. my, that's my gadget. Cool. Right on, uh, Richard. You had a, a personally adventurous year, I think. What was what was the? Uh, he went to the moon, Kent. He went to the moon. Uh, he was on the show after he went to the moon. He told us all about going to the moon. Not really so much, but yeah. I mean, I was conflicted. I I had one thing down, and then I changed it because I realized, well, I already talked about that. So, you know, I I went to the Kennedy Space Center and had this social media day where they treated us like press and we had all this cool stuff. If you want to find out more about that, listen to Ritual Misery Podcast. It's a great show. Episode 180 from July. We talk all about that. You should check it out. Three plugs, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I we get any more plugs and I can so, get my hair back. Uh. <laughs> so what Richard is saying is that his favorite moment of the year was being on the Ritual Misery podcast. Okay, no, I got that's it. really it's, not where I was going with that. My personal <laughs> moment, other than that NASA thing, and really this is what afforded that NASA thing, is the company that I've been working for for the last eleven years shut down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it gave me a whole bunch of time to kind of figure out what I wanted to do. And I have <laughs> taken a, a good amount of that time to just do things that were important to me, like that NASA trip, like spending time with some of my friends that I hadn't been able to see, like doing some independent consulting, and now like working for a company that's based in Europe that exposes me to all kinds of new places and travel and clients. And it ended up, as is so often said, being for the best, right? Like these things happen for a reason and you're going to end up finding the right path. And I think that this was the big change in my life this year. And I wouldn't have 
changed any of it. I mean, I, I miss my old company. I miss the people that I work with. I still try to see them and talk with them occasionally when I can, but this all happened for the best, I think. Mm. Good. That's um, yeah. Congratulations on 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 that new aspect of your life. That's that's really cool, Amos. Um, speaking of life changes, uh, what uh, what decisions have you made this year? I hit the retirement button. Yeah, you did. Oh my god! Such so a how many, oh, and, how many and, years? And yesterday, many, yesterday I passed my last PT test for the Air Force. Excellent. I remember nice. passing the last one, and that was. That was like the milestone. Like, like my blood pressure dropped ten points just walking out of that building with that little paper in my hand saying it was a pass. Yeah, it was ridiculous. amazing. How, how many years have you been active duty? Uh, tw- almost twenty three and a half. It'll be twenty four when I finally four, twenty four in two weeks when I finally retire. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it it, is- it's been a long, crazy journey. Uh, we'll probably do something special for it. Um, yeah, just so so excited and so relieved and so ready. Yeah. So I haven't had any, any major life changes this year, uh, but I did fulfill a lifetime goal this year. Uh, I love to travel. I love seeing new cities. And New York City has been at the top of my list for as long as I can remember. I've been all over the world, uh, but never went to the biggest city in the U.S. And I finally did that this year. Steph and I went uh, a couple of months back and it was as amazing as I thought it was going to be. I would love the opportunity to go back. Uh, New York City, if you've never been, is the most alive place that I think I have ever been. It is when you just walk around that town, you can just feel the energy of the place. Hmm. Yeah. It's exciting. It's just New York City is basically whatever you want it to be. If you want it to be a quiet solace, you've got Central Park. Like it's right there in the middle of the, it's, it is the most amazing place I've ever been. And, um, uh, in, awesome. in New York, you can be a new man. Okay. Are, are, are we missing something that we should be getting? You are, you, you are, you both are. Okay. <laughs> so I have a question. Did you stay with friends or did you stay in a hotel he stayed or in, hostel? He, How did you, he, what we, were we your accommodations? He camped in Central Park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I found myself a quiet solid. It was so peaceful. <laughs> like they had reservations. They just didn't make it there. <laughs> yeah. No, we, uh, we got an Airbnb uh, in Hell's Kitchen. We were only about okay. three, four blocks, I think, from... Um, uh, from Times Square, hmm. so we were right down by the theater district and all of that, and only, honestly, only a few blocks away from Central Park as well. It was an awesome so location. So then you missed out on one of the negative things about New York. I love New York City, and I, I, I love when I get an opportunity to go there. I could never live there because I really couldn't afford the, to live the way that I like to live in exactly. New York City. It would just, it wouldn't work. But the accommodations in hotels there are a shock to the system. Like the, it, it's probably the smallest hotel rooms I've ever seen in any city I've traveled to. Hmm. And at some point in time, if you ever have a chance to go there and actually stay in just like, you know, average hotel, brand name, like... Pick a Marriott or something like that. Mm-hmm. The the rooms are just shockingly small. Wow. <laughs> just just enough room to walk around the bed. Mm. That is ama- yeah, that I have this is the first time I've heard that and I never <laughs> But I mean, looking at it now it kind of makes sense because like all of the apartments are small. In fact, yep. the bathroom in the apartment that we stayed in is probably the smallest bathroom I've ever been in in my life. I thought you were going to say it was in the bedroom. No. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like in a, a – I think there was a closet bigger than the bathroom. Like it is shockingly small. I, I, yeah. I've i lived in two separate locations where the bathroom was so small that if you were – if someone was sitting on the shitter, you couldn't open the door. Oh, yeah. Oh, I've had – oh, I had like, an apartment like that yeah, once. Oh, yeah. My, like if you open the door when nobody's in there, it, it, it might – depends on how the wind's blowing that day. It might crease and just what? barely skid across the toilet bowl as it's opening, you know. But if someone's on the shitter, there's no, you can't even yeah. – 
yeah, yeah. that's how this ba- bathroom was. Yeah, and yeah. More. Like I, I had guests <laughs> over that I I really wondered how they were going to close the door. <laughs> yeah, and and what's more, the sink is is so close to you, at, uh, like sitting on the toilet, that the so the shelf that's underneath the sink is like a. All it is is like um, uh, you know four corners uh, standing it up. It's not a full cabinet. It's just, it's a shelf, right? Which is a good right. thing because if it was a solid shelf, there's no way you would be able to sit on the toilet <laughs> because <laughs> the space where one of your knees goes. Uh, that's that's a, how small this bathroom was. That's a really useful feature when you've got uh, food poisoning, by the way, because you can sit on the toilet. I was, I was just thinking, uh, well, depending on what condition you're yeah, in. You, you, right. you, yeah, you can sit on the toilet. You can you can, you can can get rid of your dinner at the other end in the bathtub, <laughs> and then you can wash yourself up without having to face either. Oh, there's no tub. Like, don't don't. Uh, well, the, 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 the shower basin. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I think we all just had PTSD a little bit from previous bathroom experiences. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, right. so thought-provoking science story of the year. I'm going to say that mine was the 7.0 earthquake from earlier this month. You win. Not that it was... You were there. You win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not that it was uh, it was um, you know something that like made me think, but it made me it, it made me explain earthquakes in a way that I had to relearn a lot about earthquakes. Having grown up in Southern California, being familiar with it, being drilled into my head every single year, all the things, and then finally I'm in an earthquake where I should be ducking and covering, and I'm on the shitter, so I can't duck and cover. Uh, and then having to explain that to the kids, and and they they've never lived in a, in a high uh, earthquake zones. They, they, you know, it's all, it's like volcanoes. You don't really, uh, yeah, I know volcanoes, the, 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 the blah, 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 blah. And it comes out and there's like red stuff and it's hot and you don't go there. But then when you actually visit a volcano, you're like, Oh, got it. Okay. Now I can see it's not it, like I'm a mile away and I can, I can already feel the heat. Like I, now I have a little bit more experience with this earthquakes are the same way. Like I can tell you all day long about tectonic plates and blah, blah, blah. But until you feel the room move six inches to one side in like half a second, like you don't understand the impact of an earthquake and going through that with the kids and stuff like that. It was, man, it, it was, there was a lot of relearning and a lot of explaining and a lot of, uh, uh, experiencing in fact we had a 5.0 this morning that woke us up at 5 30. oh wow uh, and it, it was it, just another aftershock because it's right along the same fault line so technically an aftershock of the 7.0 i mean you guys have been having aftershocks for weeks and weeks it's yep. it's just kind of crazy and uh, you know the amount of activity that's been going on up there i was in atlanta for a client visit a couple weeks ago and i woke up at four in the morning, four something in the morning. And I woke up thinking that I heard the room moving. I'm like, that's ridiculous. I'm in Atlanta, right? Like, and sure enough, what I had felt was a quake that had happened up in uh, like Kentucky or something like that. And I was like, there's no way. And sh- I went to the USGS site and yep, there was an earthquake and it was felt down there and everything. And just that tiny little bit, like just how unsettling that <laughs> was. And it was just like this really far away remnant of that. But it's a distinct thing. And you probably like you probably know exactly what I'm talking about, where like you hear things creak mm. in ways it's like even if you don't yet feel it, you yep. can hear things creak in ways that they normally don't sound like that. Yeah, we the the hangar I work in uh, that I was in when when the, when the seven point hit. Um, if, if anytime there's been like a three point or higher along that same fault line, it, we're a little bit closer there than we are here. But anytime you get like a three point or higher, I won't even feel it, but I'll hear the the mo- the the hangar. It shudders. It's like, and you just know like, oh, I didn't feel it, but I know that sound is like, <laughs> right. you know, that's the same sound from the earthquake. It's like, yep. it, it, it just, yeah, um, it's, 
Yeah, and, and it's it's weird because you can actually hear it like it, it shudders like in the distance and it kind of creeps towards my office on the other side of the building, and then it, you can hear it kind of go away too. It's like this this sound. Uh, yeah, it's it's creepy. It's it's weird. Um, yeah, if you haven't experienced an earthquake, I highly recommend it as long as you don't get hurt. <laughs> like it's. <laughs> Um, I, I, I love them. Th- this one really kind of set me over the edge. This was the first earthquake I felt that uh, that actually jarred me up a little bit. Um, and I was in you know the, the North Ridge in California. I was in Palmdale at the time. And the 7.2 or whatever that hit uh, San Francisco in 89, I was in Palmdale at the time. So I'm not new to earthquakes. This is the first one that really jarred me. And it was it, it, it's, people are still talking about it constantly. Oh, I'm sure. So, yeah. Um, oh, so, you can't. I have nothing for this one. <laughs> yeah. So, so the science story that that intrigued me uh, the, the, the mo- or made me think a lot actually this year uh, was sm- Richard, you're probably familiar with this. The small sat express mission that SpaceX launched. Oh, that was really cool. Yeah. So they this was a, a Falcon 9 launch uh, where they set a record by by putting 64 satellites into space mm. on, uh, on a single mission. Um, now, of course, these are not full size like GPS satellites or anything. These are like the, the small cube sets. Um, but was this a Falcon 9 or a Falcon 9 heavy? Falcon, it was a Falcon 9. 9. Hmm. I thought it was a heavy. Was, was, was it a heavy? I didn't think I don't this one now. was a heavy. I, I didn't mean to cause so much discord in the, yeah, <laughs> in the conversation. Yeah, I don't, I don't it's just know. a matter of curiosity because I know the Falcon 9 heavy is the, the largest one we've ever. Put in go space, to go so. to spacex.com if you want the new <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah. Uh, but the thing that, that made me think a lot about this was uh, among those satellites was uh, uh, one an, an experiment, uh, a bioengineering experiment that was put together by 12 and 13 year olds. Um, literally, a middle school class put a satellite in space. Uh, there was a lot of stuff like that. Uh, small organizations. Uh, nonprofits, schools, uh, putting satellites into space. And it was just one of those moments that is like, you know, space is becoming more and more and more accessible yeah. to the everyday person. Uh, and like, it, it, it really made my imagination soar. Like, ritual misery could potentially put up a ritual misery satellite in space. Like, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous, but 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 yeah, we have it but as a Patreon goal. Possible, yeah. but it could happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have that as a new level in Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but yes. Let what, us, I mean, I what what I think a lot of people don't realize is that this idea you said CubeSat, and I'm not convinced that everybody knows what that is. A satellite can be as small as like a, a bottle of water, or a loaf yes. of bread, or a briefcase, and yeah. When we're talking about CubeSats, most of them are around, you know, one of those sizes. They're they're mm-hmm. relatively small objects. Mm-hmm. And that's how you can get these kits, the, the you know, if you will, these these satellites where these teams of kids in middle school or high school have put together experiments that are like the size of a of a typical like portable science experiment, except they're sending it to space. How friggin' cool is that? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, the thing that really gets me is, as you said, science, science is, is making it to where space is more accessible, but our universe is not getting smaller. Like we're not reigning in the universe. We're, it, it's actually getting uh, bigger and not in a physical sense, but we're understanding more and more about how, how much is out there that we don't know? Like we are, we right. are discovering how much we don't know, but not necessarily discovering the unknown. And, yeah. but, but we, simultaneously it is physically getting bigger. Right. Yeah. And, and, but, but, and, and while it's happening, it's becoming more accessible. It, it's just, it's, it's like space is this, this. So are you saying that space could be infinite? <sighs> Wow, space is, it's so big, man. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it's just so big. Look, if Neil deGrasse Tyson hasn't declared space is infinite yet, then I'm not re- re- ready to go out on that limb. <laughs> I'm going to have to wait for him to lead me on that one. There's at least somebody with way more knowledge than I have. Uh, but yeah, it, it, just, it just, it confounds me how much 
mm. bigger it's it's seeming while we're still making it so much more accessible. It, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Space so is speaking so cool. of accessible, I'm going to move on to the to the next topic, which is uh, most WTF moment, because uh, talking about SpaceX leads right into this next story. Uh, Elon Musk runs SpaceX and Elon Musk is an eccentric <laughs> billionaire and he does what the fuck he wants to do just because he decided to do it. And he put one of his Tesla Roadsters into a rocket and released it into space. And he put a the mannequin inside the car and called him Starman. And now he's the I think he just went past Mars recently. Um, did, really, we're putting cars in space, and just because, like that's that's what we do now. That was I loved that moment. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely loved yep. that moment. I mean, how how friggin' bizarre was that? <laughs> That you have. Oh, and by the way, it was a mannequin in their spacesuit that they've designed mm -hmm. yep. for crew in one of his Teslas. And if I remember correctly, I think on the display panel on the Tesla, they programmed it to read "Don't panic." Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. 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 <laughs> From uh, uh, Hitchhiker's uh, Guide. Yeah. Hitchhiker's Guide. Guide. It, Galaxy. Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't and, just the car though. It was the simultaneous landing of the booster rockets. It was the launch itself going as flawlessly as it did. The largest right. rocket we've ever launched into space, the Falcon 9 Heavy. Right. That was the Heavy. Yeah, right. that, was, that was. That definitely was. Um, the, just the whole thing, the whole process of it all, and to cap it off with something so ridiculous as throwing an electric car into space... Just to say that he could, like, yeah, we did that. That's something, um, you know, that's something I did. Uh, it, it just, the whole thing was just phenomenal. It was, it was great to watch. If you're into science at all, that was like a, a forty minute show of holy crap, this is cool. With, and, with David Bowie music playing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, automatically elevates it. It's like a plus two yeah. of coolness right there. <laughs> uh, you combine space and D David Bowie, and it's like this synergistic. Uh, 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 enhancement um yeah the whole thing was just cool I, I i loved it i freaking i didn't understand it because i'm not that smart but damn it i thought it was cool as hell um yeah uh, richard uh what did what did you think was the uh most wtf moment of 2018 every next <laughs> day of the year like i i i know we've talked about this I went on about this last year a little bit too much, but I watch way too much news now. I never cared about the news. Mm. I never cared about politics. I watch way too much news now. And it's like a train wreck that I just can't stop watching mm. because every day something happens that's worse than the day before. Mm. And you know what? Nobody cares. I mean, Generally, people care, but in a way that matters, nobody cares. Yeah. And I just don't get it. Yeah. And I think it's well, I think it's what you're saying. Every day is, is a new a, a new level of WTF. Like it's like we're, we're I don't know. Desensitized is the right word, but I think I think that is part of it. Yeah. I think we're thinking this is the new normal and how could it get any worse but it does every day something else happens in politics that's worse than the day before i, I i'm just gonna throw can't say anything I'm, I'm gonna throw my card out there um as in almost any conversation i join in in, in part of i am the the cynic of the group um it's it's just what i do it's how i think I am going to say that it is an intentional desensitization to specific subjects, specific subject matter. And I do not think that it is not a conspiracy. It is a plan. It's in place. It's working. And so many, so much of America is falling hook, line and sinker for the whole thing on both sides of the aisle. And, it, it, me, Kent and I have had discussions about where I think this is going to go that I can't say until September. 
Um, but yeah. it's it's just so abundantly clear to me right now at this moment in history. And I'll just say for the record, for whenever we future talk about this, maybe um, I will I will say for the record that it's so abundantly clear to me how wrong Amos is yeah. about. Yeah, <laughs> of all the things he and I see eye to eye on, this is probably the most divisive, but it's also the most understood by each of us. Yeah, like totally. it, it's yeah, I completely get his point of view because we've but- we've had so many discussions about it, and we're yeah, I just it's God, man, I and and I don't think it's an accident. I don't think it's an accident at all. I think it's all completely intentional, and we're all being played. Yeah, I, I think there's at least some truth to to what you're saying there. to that uh, at least right <laughs> yeah 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 what what uh what was your wta 2018 moment we reached out and asked um adolfo and eduardo um to come on the show to talk edgar. about huh yeah edgar sorry oh, oh, um edgar. to talk about the to talk about malacca and how it's going and how it's coming along only to find out that they had a hard release date that snuck up on us yep. and yep. We booked on every platform. Yeah, we booked them and not knowing that. And then it developed in our conversation with them about what we were going to talk about on the show. And it came out the week after we had them on the freaking show. And <laughs> it was an amazing game. It's still an amazing game that I play uh, on, on the regular. Um, that was just like, holy shit, this thing that we, we almost, almost thought it was vaporware. Like we were really enthusiastic about it, but we hadn't seen the progress. We were saw yeah, the videos well, and the, stuff. The Kickstarter had failed. Yeah, had like all these things. Well, I mean, think about this. We met them. What was it? Like four or five years ago. Yeah, now like, something well, like that. And like they've been talking years, about yeah. this for this whole time. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and so I reach out to them and invite them on the show, and they're like, "Yeah, sure, cool." And then as we're talking to them, we find out that the fucking game is coming out in like just a couple weeks. Uh, and, and 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 it's good. It's fun. It's really interesting. It's got some great historical aspects to it. And they took their time with it. And it's it's awesome. And we're not the only ones that think so. And that was really like a holy shit. What just happened? Where? <laughs> how are we like you talked about the book earlier? I'm genuinely like, man, I really feel like we're part of the story, even if we didn't actually increase sales of the game. For me, I'm part of this story. Like it's part of of who yeah. I am on this podcast, and 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 how we've talked to them, and and just enjoyed their company, and and gone with it. it it's just amazing. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, it, it, it's funny you were talking about that because I was thinking uh, about the uh, you know like having Kickstarter folks on the show and things like that. And uh, you remember having Francis on mm-hmm. with hip hop hip hop's game. Yep. Dear- his Kickstarter, and it was right after he was on our show that his Kickstarter uh, met the goal. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always joked with him about, uh, you know, RMP made that happen for you, man. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, no, it's it's a really cool thing to be a part of. Um, yeah, man, uh, Lienzo and in Malacca, uh, good, like amazing story. And uh, yep. yeah. Awesome. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and cover my historic event for the year uh, in that we just talked about it during Richard's um, WTF moment. Uh, just <laughs> that, uh, just just all of it. I, I, I've never, I'm still, I still don't watch the news. I don't give two shits about the news, but I am plugged in on the politics. I am so, in next month, like in two weeks, I'm going to go to D.C. and the fan the, the american fanboy all of the patriotism i have left after all my cynicism has chipped away at it all these years all of it is reigniting right now because i'm going to go to the fucking capital and i'm going to see the national mall and i'm going to see all these places that i've only ever read about and everything else like i am super hyped up about it and my cynicism is at peak resolution right now because of everything <laughs> going on in the government like both sides of me are battling for excitement level right now. It, 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 uh, it, it's crazy. Well, what, what, what's interesting to me when, well, I've only visited DC once so far. And uh, what was interesting to me was that no matter what you're thinking about government or politics or any of that sort of thing, when you actually go downtown, like, you know, go to the mall, go to the center of government, um, at least my in my experience, like the actual function of the government and the 
politicians that are currently holding those those key positions was the furthest thing from my mind. Yes, I, I would agree with that completely. DC is so much bigger than the, the game's smallness played. of the the day to day crap that goes on, or even what one administration is dealing with. I, I think when when you get to spend time and see the monuments and stand in front of uh, of Lincoln and Jefferson and and stand in the bogs with the guys from the Korean War more memorial and stuff like that it's just it, it's it, it's so much bigger than the crap that we're dealing with on a day-to-day basis hmm Agree. Yeah. yeah, that that sums it up really well for me. Um, Medusa, Deuce Gone Wild in the chat room just recently moved from here in Alaska to uh, uh, the D.C. area and to Andrews. Um, and he says it feels like Disneyland. He says it's just crazy how it feels out there. It's just it's just all new. And uh, yeah, he and I uh, he and I have had discussions about it, too. And it's, I'm super psyched. I am just stupid psyched <laughs> right now. My only my only sadness is that Richard won't be there in the area when I'm there. Right. I know that really sucks. I was looking forward to this when you said you were going to be here, yeah. and I'm like, oh crap, I'm going to be at CES yeah. that week. Yeah, we just we bought tickets tonight, so I'll be there <laughs> Monday to Saturday. The Monday to Saturday that you won't be there, so maybe we'll cross paths in the airport or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, right. Richard, what, what what do you feel was the historic moment of the year? So obviously we have biases that we bring to this and sure a lot of stuff has gone on, but I went with the science perspective again. And one of the things that I think that happened this year that's amazing, even though we've kind of done it before, was landing the Mars InSight uh, probe on the planet of Mars this year. And Part of that is because every time we do this, we do it differently. I say we, like I had anything to do with it. (laughs) Every time humankind (laughs) does this, uh, it's a little bit different. There are different parameters. There are different mission objectives. There are different technologies available. Different participants worldwide as far as like nationalities and governments and scientists are concerned. Yeah, yeah. And and in in this mission in particular, one of the things that was so cool is... We had a significantly reduced communication delay with the probe as it was landing and getting pictures and data from the probe because they used CubeSats to actually monitor what was going on. Like the, the, uh, they had sent these CubeSats out to Mars before the, sat, before the probe got there. And they were just hanging out there waiting for the probe. And when it was time for the probe to go and land, they monitored the progress from above and they were able to relay the communication. So we had less gap in communication uh, or less latency in the communication. So, so cool. I love how we see this progressing and how the technology is changing in frankly, unexpected ways. This was an experiment, these CubeSats. They did not count on this working and they had redundancy just in case one of them failed and they both worked flawlessly. Yeah, Yeah. we've we've come a long way from a a $10 billion crater uh, that we put on on the surface of Mars 20 years ago or whatever (laughs) because, because we can't math. Uh, to having fucking like miniature satellites just relaying information just in just in case it didn't kind of work through or whatever you know, um, and everything working fine like ET phone home and shit like uh, we're we're doing it's it's amazing just in our lifetimes it's been stupid how how much we've how much we've gone through and how much we've seen it's ridiculous. Yep. 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 The historic event for me this year is the summits the North Korea summits that have occurred uh both the the north and south korea peace summit uh actually series of summits and the uh, u.s north korea summit uh both both i mean i I have to kind of put them in to one basket because it's it's very significant in the history of north korea because north korea didn't used to exist it came into existence at the end of world war ii and 
with when uh, so when World War II ended, uh, Korea as a like as a whole country, as a peninsula, the Kingdom of Korea belonged to the Empire of Japan. So when Jap- when Japan was defeated, the assets of the uh, of the empire, for lack of a better term, were kind of split uh, amongst uh, basically between the United States and Russia. Uh, as far as who would would take uh, uh, temporary control of the territory and kind of help them transition into like you know peacetime independence, et cetera. right? Well, Korea, as a nation was split into two. The north part went to Russia, the s- southern part went to the u s um, at, at approximately and, the thirty eighth parallel. Yes, and the influence of of the I guess the overseers is very clear. South Korea is a capitalistic uh, democracy, and North Korea became a um, almost a theocracy, really, <laughs> um, definitely an autocracy of uh, you know a dictatorship. Yeah, and uh, which they are still to this day, and very different because, worlds. Yeah, and then so uh, immediately after this, uh, uh, the Korean War happened. Uh, basically, the the North said, "Well, we need to reunite North and South Korea. Um, we're going to do that by force." So they invaded South Korea. The U.S. came to the aid of South Korea. War, blah blah blah. Well, the war China, never in- China came to the aid of North Korea because they were afraid of it, America getting right. too close to their border. <laughs> yeah, that's the part yeah, they don't exactly. teach you so in, in high school. But the the the, 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 the takeaway here is that the countries are still at war. North and South Korea signed an armistice. A ceasefire, ceasefire, not a, not a, um, no, uh, not a peace treaty, yeah. right? So, uh, the the fact that North and South came together and discussed, we need to end this war. We're, this is uh, a, a way forward. If we meet these objectives, then we will sign a peace treaty, and then we can start talking about the possibility of reuniting the countries. That is huge. That is incredibly huge. Another historic thing that happened was a U.S. president. Uh, sitting down with yeah with the leader of North Korea and that has never happened right ever um, you know say what you will about the administration or the the reasons for it or the you know the president himself but but the fact that a US president talked with the leader of North Korea has never happened before so it's it's quite historic uh, things and right before this happened like earlier in the, like we began 2018 thinking we might actually go to a like a a, a hot war a, a, you know a live firing war shooting war with North Korea <laughs> Twitter so yeah uh, and then you know to end it with the prospects of peace is it's a, it's a big change this it's historic for sure no matter yeah. how this turns out to be uh, 20 years from now high school students are going to be tested on the date that it occurred like it's mm. it's i that. imagine this has to be poignant for you guys i mean you spent years there yeah uh three, yeah. three years between between the two of us yeah um with various levels of propaganda uh and 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 uh, some of it healthy some of it i didn't feel necessarily healthy but still helpful i guess uh, if that's the thing, but yeah, it's, it's, it's very strange. It's very different. It's, it, it's hopeful. Um, but of course, as I've st- said before, I'm the skeptic. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll keep my, keep my hopes yeah. in check. High hopes yeah, and right, low so expectations. Let's, let's, let's move into our final category here. We are running a little long on this, this episode. Uh, so the, the final category is our, our personal podcasting milestone that occurred this year. I'm going to go ahead and say mine first because mine is kind of boring because it's a repeat of last year. Uh, I, I was, I had the opportunity to appear on court killers again this year, uh, which I thought was really awesome, especially because for the spoiler and time portion of it, I got to talk to Tom about a star Wars movie and <laughs> that was really <laughs> my goal for being on court killers. Again, I got to talk to Tom directly about solo, a star Wars story um, and that was really special to me, and that was that was freaking awesome. Yep, uh, I'll, I'll go next because in the order of, uh, in, in I don't say importance, but in the order of um, how awesome it is, I guess uh, mine would be next because I actually delved into the freelancing and independent podcast production and editing world. 
Um, got my first paycheck right here. What? Um, had to make a little plaque and all that other stuff. And am now technically in business for myself, uh, subcontracting with people. And it's been awesome. It's been amazing. And I need already needed a first break last weekend when I didn't do anything podcast related until I started watching Game of Thrones on Tuesday night. So <laughs> right, um, that's huge. That has uh, implications for your post uh, Air Force. Right. This this is me moving right. moving beyond the Air Force and actually testing the waters and seeing how capable I am of, of no shit getting things done on a deadline with someone else uh, relying on me to deliver a quality product. And it's been awesome. It's been challenging. Uh, I've learned some things. Uh, Richard even taught me a few things without meaning to. Um, and <laughs> uh, it's Richard even taught yeah. me a few well, things. That's well, no, no, that's no, how the, desperate the, I was. The, the, the <laughs> kicker was that you did it without even realizing that you were doing it. I think um, just some of the conversations we've had about different aspects of freelancing and uh, being a business for yourself and working things out and how to how to approach the the projects and things like that. It's, it's been very, cool. very uh, educational and interesting. So um, that's my big moment for the year. Big, as far as podcasting goes is actually uh, making it a real thing. It's, it's at least now a part-time job. That is awesome. awesome. Richard, what, what about you? He already had the part-time that's job a, and <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, so we're, we're, so we're escalating. That's a good transition to me though, yeah. because that's about monetization, right? Mm -hmm. And, one of my goals this year was that I wanted to figure out how to monetize. And I had determined that I was going to take advertising on Home On. And I would say that I technically get to check that box off. Mm. I didn't have as many sponsors as I would want to have throughout a year, but I had about a third of my episodes sponsored this year. So that was probably pretty good. Now that percentage is easy to come to because I had very few episodes this year, yeah. but no, I, I'm, I'm it, really happy about that. All, I, I all, statistics, to to, all statistics are, are, are skewed. Uh, it really just depends on how you want to focus and, and what it meant to you. So, yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, but I really wanted to get some sponsors on and do it in a way that I thought was respectful to our listeners. And I think I accomplished that. So I'm going to continue that into next year and see where it goes. That's just awesome. Um, so much, so much progress, so much change and so much, uh, in, in, I don't, don't want to say influence. I'm going to say aspiration and, and how awesome it just is to be in the world and in a position in life where, any of us, any of the three of us have the possibility of making any sort of income from this thing that we love doing so fucking much. Right. Um, right. You know, Kent, Kent hasn't reached into that, that market yet, uh, but still just having the Patreon for, for ritual misery and be able to, you know, buy, buy some cables and shit when uh, earthquakes happen and not have to dip into my personal funds and have that little, that little cash reserve there. Um, getting paid for actually editing podcasts and then Richard getting sponsorships, man, it's, it's not a lot. It's not, we're not, we're not Tom Merritt. We're not going to get rich, uh, which I'm not saying Tom Merritt's rich, but you know, he's very successful. Um, and we're not going to become billionaires, but it's doing what we love and, and getting compensated for it. With it is, is fantastic. Is it, is it, is it, is it, is it those are the lottery tickets you bought with the sponsorship money? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got to invest it somewhere, right? <laughs> so that exactly. why not Powerball? <laughs> so that concludes with, with with you know ending on the Powerball note. Uh, so that concludes our our review of the year 2018. Amos, here in a couple of days, we are going to officially wrap up the year 2018 with an annual event known as the Diamond Club New Year's Eve Streamathon. Yep. If you, speaking to you now, listeners, if you have not already, I highly encourage you to go to twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon and follow that channel. Activate the uh, the little notifier thing to, to tell you when, it, when uh, it's going. Subscribe, thumbs up, and hit the bell, right? Is that what they yeah. do on YouTube? Uh, no, yeah, no, <laughs> uh, no, no need to, su to subscribe to this. Uh, but I encourage you to go there. Actually, Amos, for mash the video. Mash it, mash it. 
Can you can you bring up the um, the the web page there in the link? Um, sure. Let me uh, let me find the link that you were mentioning. It's this one right here. I'm going to click the little yep. button and click there. Hit so this. I want to I just want to highlight uh, a couple of things on here. No, number one, the uh, the graphics that are there are new this year. They were created by uh, Sassian, and actually. <laughs> you could do me a favor, Amos, and go into the uh, the chat thing and and say um, um, slash uh, <laughs> what is it end host I think or uh, uh, I forget what it is now. Dang it! Uh, but where where that screen is, there's a uh, a, a poster uh, for advertising the yeah. streamathon. Um, anyway, so go the there other and do thing the thing to point out is the there's a box on the page said that's called schedule, and I encourage everyone to go there and see. When the show is happening, uh, when your favorite streamer is going to be on, um, it's all right there. This is your hub. We are, as of this recording, we are three days, four hours, and 34 minutes away from showtime. So yep. uh, be there. And this is the first year you and I are actually taking a prime spot during the middle of it and not just doing the bookends and uh, helping other people out. We're actually taking a two-hour spot right in the middle. We've got um, an amazing interview to do, another amazing interview to do, and then uh, some goofing off to do of our own. So it's going to be yep. a good time. And We've got at least two interviews happening, and one of them... Um <laughs> just did. one of them might be live <laughs> yeah, one of them might be uh, yeah anyway uh, just tune in tune in go check out the schedule yep. that's twitch.tv slash dc streamathon and uh yeah since you're gonna be doing that anyway cruise on by ritual misery you'll see the little thing ritualmisery.com you'll see the little thing for the our 200th episode you got a little time left to fill in that and uh, tell us what you think and we're gonna have that episode here in a few weeks so um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that because we've been drilling that in forever. Yep. Um, Richard, where can people find these uh, wonderful podcasts and things that you do on the regular uh, to listen to some of your sponsorships? Hmm. All right. Well, my show is called Home On, and that is a show about smart home technology for DIY consumers. I also co-host a show called Entertainment 2.0 where we talk about a lot of the stuff they talk about about on cord killers it started off kind of as a home theater pc show and that's not really a thing anymore so we've you know broadened our scope a little bit and we do that every week that is entertainment 2.0 find them in the usual places and me you can find me at richard gunther on twitter i'm not on the facebook i am on the instagram and yeah that's about it you could tell richard's old because he refers to it as the Facebook and the Instagram. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, just, that was affected. It's, it's just, it's just, I'm just kidding. I do the same thing. It's just the Insta. If, the if Insta. people are interested in following me at RM underscore Del Noche on Twitter, just about everywhere else, I am Del Noche. Yeah. It could be Del Noche 77. I don't know. Search Del Noche and you'll probably find me. What about you, Amos? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Ethan Kane. I'm pretty easy to find. It's either Ethan Kane or Ethan Kane 77 pretty much everywhere, including Game Center. Hey, go find me. I got some games you free to play. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can find the show at Ritual Misery. Next week we have, is it next week? Do we, is, is this, ne is it really next week? Like we got Richard on now, but is it, it is really next week? Next week we have Tay Allen kicking off the year again. Because that's how we roll. Richard closes it down, take cranks it back up, and holy shit, I'm super psyched. We had tons of plans. We don't know if any of that's going to actually come through, but Tay's on next week. <laughs> it's always entertaining. Uh, it's always entertaining. Ah, uh, um, there's going to be plenty of that next week. Yeah. Guarantee. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific on DiamondClub.tv and Twitch.com slash Ritual Misery. Thank you for so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. For Kent, for me, for you, and for everybody. Uh, see, I missed it. I missed it. And now I'm just going to say goodbye over the music. This was your Ritual Misery podcast. There we go. See ya. <laughs> Oh, wait, now this is the thing, right? Hit this. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y. <laughs>